Hi and welcome to Off-Road CC's review of the Ribble HCTI. If you've been on this channel before then you'll know the score by now. I'm Rachel and I'm going to talk through my review of this bike but you can find the full thing in writing on www.off.road.cc. So on with the review. So I think you'll agree this titanium hardtail is a thing of beauty. It comes from the Lancashire direct sales brand Ribble who released it in March 2019 and then soon after in September when we saw them at Cycle Show they also released a steel version sporting identical geometry with cheaper price options. I've also been told there will soon follow up with an aluminium version of the same bike which will be even cheaper. This is a titanium 150mm hardtail and the one we have here is the GX Eagle spec which gives us a RockShox Pike Select Plus fork, 12-speed GX Eagle drivetrain, SRAM Guide R 4-piston brakes, Hope Fortis 27.5-inch wheels that are shod with Schwalbe Nobby Nick 2.6-inch tyres and then there's a race face cockpit and Ribble's own brand level 150mm dropper post. This little lot comes in at £3,199, which is the middle of the range. So you can also get an NX Eagle spec bike with a Revelation fork at 2699 and an XX1 Eagle bike with Fox 34 float factory forks for 4999 Plus, there's also the option for a frame only for 1799 if you want to spec the build yourself. This build, minus the pedals, comes in at 12.8 kilos, so 28.2 pounds, which isn't light, but it's a solid build and it's not designed to be a weight weenie. The HCTI frame has a couple of neat features. There's a cool looking CNC bridge bearing the Ribble logo lodged between the seat stays and the seat tube. And there's a sleek integrated two bolt seat clamp. Down near the bottom bracket, there's a small brace too, which allows full internal cable routing of the dropper post. Elsewhere, the cables enter the down tube and then exit from inside the chain stays and seat tube, adding to the clean lines. As I mentioned, the bike gets aggressive geometry, making this a very much all-mountain hardtail. With 150mm of travel up front, the bike has a 64 degree head angle and a 74 degree effective seat tube angle. So these are the unsagged values, so both will get steeper once you sit on the bike. The chainstays are on the slightly short, shorter side of the equation at 430mm, although on this medium bike I felt pretty well balanced four to aft, but I actually measured the wheelbase of the bike as 1201mm rather than the 1187 that the brand has on their geometry chart. The reach of this medium is a roomy 455mm which suits me down to the ground. The effective top tube at 630mm is slightly long which left me a tad stretched out when I was seated, but it's nothing too major. A steeper seat angle would mean that you could have a shorter effective top tube, but this also may mean that whilst on the flat, there would be more weight on the rider's hands, which I suspect the brand were keen to avoid. If I was buying a hardtail, I'd buy a steel one, or if my bank account allowed, it would be a titanium one. The ride quality you get from a more compliant frame in comparison to alloy hardtails is well worth the additional spend. It really does take the rough edge and rattle off what can otherwise be a harsh ride and it doesn't lose out in terms of efficiency either. This compliance combined with that new top end trail fork in the RockShock Pike. So this one is the one with the Charger 2.1 damper, which is the same as comes in the Lyric Select Plus. It gives you low speed compression adjustment in addition to the rebound, makes this Ribble HTTI a capable ride whatever terrain you want to take it down. I added one volume reduced to the fork and found it to be a supple, supportive and totally applicable trail fork for this kind of bike. It's a package that will happily be hustled on the steeps as well as rail smoother terrain. I found the bike to be pretty balanced and on more than one occasion I dug my heels in and let it go only to come out of a long rough descent relatively unscathed in hardtail terms. I mean that it's often rough and it's exciting in inverted commas but it's super fun. In this spec, the bike isn't bad value. It's about on par of what you get with other full builds of titanium bikes. I would like to see better brakes though. The Guide R's, although they're four piston trail brakes, I found them underpowered and they're easily overwhelmed. Something like the Guide RE's would have been better. They're more powerful, they're similarly priced too, although they are a bit heavier. 
I'd also like to see a chunkier front tyre. So this new version of the Nobby Nick that's front and rear on here, on the rear is totally fine in the dry, two mildly moist conditions too. But as soon as it gets wet, it's a bit of a wild ride, lacking bite. It's the same story up front, although that's in a much more fear-inducing, I think my face is about to hit the floor kind of way. Of the Swalby range, I'd rather see something like a Magic Mary fitted up to the front to improve grip in all conditions. Lastly, the gripes do end with the own brand level dropper seat post. So I had two posts fitted to this bike and two have broken, so neither would come back up. With the second post actually scored the front of the stanchion, indicating there's something mechanical awry inside. But Ribble has good customer service and will sort you out, send you a new post and refund the difference of your bike shop fitting it for you. In all, this is an absolutely ace bike, which ticks a lot of boxes. It looks great, the geometry is decent, and it's a super fun ride. The titanium material takes the sting out of the proverbial tail, and the HTTI is really apt at hopping about the trail. Riding a hardtail like this will see you picking lines and finding the smooth ground on every trail. I am keen to ride the steel version of this bike and compare the ride characteristics. I think it would make me think seriously about the high price of titanium versus its cheaper steel brother. At the moment, I think I'm in a camp where I think that you don't probably or you won't probably feel the difference in ride characteristics between the two materials. You might feel the difference if that steel bike is insanely heavy though, so that's something to look at. This leaves the only reason to buy the titanium bike down to aesthetics, which is no bad thing at all really. For now though, if you're hankering after a shiny titanium hardtail and have the cash to drop on new tyres, this is a top-notch example for steeper, gnarlier terrain and more aggressive riding. You can read the full review and check out more photos of this bike at www.off.road.cc. In the meantime, my next test bike is one of the new Giant Chance 29ers from their 2020 range, so I'll see you soon in a review of that bike. Thanks for watching.